Today, we'll be giving a gameplay overview and review of the game Unfair, created by Joel Finch and published by Good Games Publications. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode with To Die For Games. I'm Mandy, the board gaming pinup girl. My fellow hosts are Tracy, the gaming maven. I'm Stefan, the games teacher. Do you only have a few moments to watch your favorite part? Well, down below we've attached timestamps to help you find the part you want to see most. We love to get your feedback, so please leave us a comment below. And while you're there, if you like what you see and want to be notified when we produce new content, click on the subscribe button you'll get those notifications in your inbox. Unfair plays in about 60 to 120 minutes, is suggested for ages 12 and up, and accommodates two to four players. We've got Unfair all set up and ready to go. So let's get to it. Subjective, I, I mean objective. Over the course of eight rounds, players will build up their theme park to earn the most points. So Mandy, tell us, what's inside the box? Components. One main game board, four packs of theme cards, pirates, jungle, robots, and vampires. Four player reference sheets, coin tokens of various values, one start player marker, one current step marker, one city planning closure reminder, three game changer cards, score pad, and the rule book. All right, now that we know what we're playing with, how do we set up? Tracy? Set up. Choose one theme pack per player that is playing. Separate the card types in the packs and shuffle each of their respective piles well. Don't forget the well. Place the park, event, and blueprint cards onto their spaces on the game board. Count out four red and white unfair cards and place them on their space on the game board. Then place the city planning card on top of that. Finally, you'll place the four blue and white unfair cards on top of that. This will form the city deck and will be the round counter for the game. Each player receives a main gate card placed face up and one loan card, which is turned face down. Place the coins within easy reach of all the players. Deal five park cards to each player. If they receive no attraction, they may shuffle their cards back in and draw five new cards until they get an attraction card. Deal two showcase cards to each player. These are kept secret from all the other players. Reveal the top six park cards face up on the game board and the start player receives the start player marker. Note that optionally, you may want to use a game changer card to alter the game. The first date is recommended for the very first gameplay. So now that we're all set up, how do we play? Stefan? Gameplay. Players score points by building attractions hiring staff, building blueprints, and well, so many other things. Theme parks do have a lot going on after all. Each round has four steps. Step one, the event step. Each player draws an event card from the top of the event deck. The starting player reveals the top card from the city deck, then each player follows its instructions. Players can now, in turn order, choose to play an event card from their hand if they wish. They decide whether to use the top or bottom half of the card. They may pass and play an event card later. But once everyone passes, this step is done. Important! Event cards have a top and a bottom option. The top is used at this point and usually helps the player who played the card. The bottom half is usually in reaction to another player's action, which you can choose to use at that time instead. Also, the pushpin symbol means that this effect happens later in the round. 
Step two, the park step. Each player will take three actions in turn order, one at a time. You can A, draw cards. Players can take one from the open market and put it into their hand to build later. Or they can draw two cards from either the park, events, or blueprints deck and keep one, discarding the other, or discard both. They can discard a card from their hand to draw five park cards and keep one, discarding the rest. B. Build. Players can build a card from their hand by paying the cost in the coin value ribbon. Players can have a total of five attractions, and one can be a super attraction. However, they can upgrade their attractions any number of times following these rules. The upgrades on a single attraction can be the same symbol type, but not the same name. You may choose to build an upgrade on a closed attraction, as the cost to build the upgrade is then halved. C. Demolish. Players may demolish a single park card. However, if it is an attraction, all upgrades on it are also discarded. D. Loose Change. Players may collect loose coin that fell from guests' pockets by adding up the number of attractions built and collecting an equal amount of coin. Don't forget, if a player needs money, they can always take a loan by turning their loan card over for the first one and collecting five coins. Each loan after that rotates the card counterclockwise, but be careful, as each loan is worth negative points at the end of the game. Are you tired yet? No? Good, because there's only two more steps to go. Mandy, can you tell us how they play? Step three, guest step. Now the parks will open, attracting guests and earning players money. To work out the income a player receives, they will count up the star value of their cards from attractions, upgrades, and staff members. Closed attractions and their upgrades do not score nor do unavailable staff members. Note, the main gate shows that each player's initial park capacity is 15. Players only receive coin to the maximum of their park capacity, even if their park has a higher star value. Some cards can modify this rule. Step four, cleanup step. Discard all market cards and refill from the park deck. Discard any event cards still in play. Turn any face down cards in players' parks face up. Players will discard cards from their hand to equal the hand limit of five. Note that blueprints and showcase cards do not count towards this total. Pass the start player marker to the next person in clockwise order. So, how does the game end? Tracy? Game end. The game ends at the end of the eighth round. Imagine that. Or whenever the city card deck runs out. Players will total their score on the handy dandy score pad. They will score for A, attractions. Each attraction scores for the number of icons on it. Each separate icon is counted, even if they're the same icon. Score the points according to the chart in the rule book for this section. B. Blueprints. Reveal your blueprints. Score points for completed ones based on the point value of that card. Note, any incomplete blueprints are worth minus 10 points each. C. Coins. Every two coins is worth one point each. D. Other cards. Certain staff members that are played are worth points as stated on their card. And E. Loans. Loans are also worth negative points at the end of the game, depending on how many you took, so be careful. Then you'll total up the points from the various scoring possibilities. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. So that is how you play Unfair. So now we're ready to give a review of Unfair. What do you guys think? I really liked it. Can you tell? She's smiling already. I liked it. I really enjoyed it too. It was a great game. 
Yeah, I also enjoyed it. I was a little worried, you know, carnival -y, fair kind of game. It could go bad like a clown, you know, it just doesn't always work for everyone, but I enjoyed it. So let's get to some of the topics we want to discuss. Artwork, artwork and theme. I was, it was, we, now we got a prototype copy. Yep. I actually, it was fantastic. We yeah. had to actually punch out the cardboard for the pieces. So it was almost production quality, I found. Yeah. They did mention that things are going to be a little thicker and stuff. So that's great. But I, I was pretty pleased with it. I liked the card art. Yep. I agree. Uh, the card art was, was fun. It was colorful, uh, easy to follow. The iconography was good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I too uh, like the art. It was vibrant, the colors, and the theme was bang on. I mean, you knew you were going to a fair, right? There yeah. was the cards had a little popcorn bag, kind of the stripes on them, and you know you had the Ferris wheel. Even the cards themselves, you could see there was like theme park, amusement park kind of idea. So you knew what you were playing with and where you, you were, were going. Yeah, you know, with the game. So thought that was excellent. Quality of components. Now we know this is a prototype, but even in the uh, in the copy that we received, the review copy, uh, the card th was a good thickness yep. already. Mm -hmm. um, okay. There was a little bit of room for improvement, but it, they still felt right in the hand. Mm -hmm. um, the cardboard was suitably thick, you know. As, so no, it was very very good quality components. Yeah. And they addressed this to us actually, and had, and had mentioned that the copies that will go out will be even better. So we thought it was really good as it was. So the fact that it's even better, that's a good thing. It is. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Game mechanics. Now I know when we played this game, they initially told us the first time you play, play with the I think it's the first date. The first date game changer scenario. card. Game yeah. changer card. That's it. So that's a good way to start. And I thought it took out some of the uh, more difficult aspects of the game, particularly with the blueprints. For some mm -hmm. reason, harder blueprints yeah. and also some of the meaner cards in the last right. half of the round. That particular game changer also made for a shorter game, which Correct. is good for your first introductory run through a game to get a feel for it, mm -hmm. and then you can try one of the other game changer cards if you want for a longer game later. Exactly. Yeah, which I like. I mean, the title of the game is unfair, but you can make it a bit more fair by using the game changer. Although card. to be <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> see what I did there? It was kind of unfair. There's some, there's some mean things you can do to your opponents and really mess them up. I, we, we tried some of that. Yeah, that was me. I'm sorry. And I felt bad because I seemed to be picking on Tracy. She just seemed to have yeah. the most for me to take. I did. Like I using the mesmerist to steal someone's, <laughs> uh, someone's staff cards. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's all good. It's it didn't help game. me win, but It was you right know. there in the name of the game. So exactly. So, so yeah, we had to play it to its fullest potential. I'm just That's my story and yep. I'm sticking to it. Uh, similar games. Can you guys think of any? Well, just thematically, World's Fair, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Also, uh, Steam Park. I have not played this game. I have also not played it, but it is a theme park management game right. as well. It's a building, so. yeah, you're building it, and yeah. you're building type style. Are there any games like that are mean like that? I, I mean, I know there are lots of like mean games like that, but specifically where cards are kind of used like that. I feel like there's some that are just not coming to my head oh, right now. Sure. But I'll think about them five minutes I know, from now. After we finish this video. <laughs> but I think the ones mentioned are pretty straightforward. Uh, World Fair is not mean, but you're right. Thematically, it's very similar. So with the cards and yeah. And uh, so overall opinion. I was pleasantly surprised by this, given the fact that we were playing it so late and we were tired. It kind of like perked me up and got me going. I'm like, I want to play this. I almost wanted to play it again. Yeah, exactly. So. It was kind of midnight, so I'm like, I gotta work <laughs> like, tomorrow. But we're done. Yeah. <laughs> when we first saw this game at Gen Con out on the table, I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna like this. And we got to play our review copy. And I'm like, ooh, I like this. Um, yeah. it, it's, it was a really fun game. It's right up my alley. I enjoy it. It does have uh, a little bit of uh, the take that with the cards. Right. Uh, some of the card mechanics can be a little bit nasty towards your opponents. It didn't seem like it was too over the top for that though. Yeah. Um, so That's it seemed right. like it was pretty well balanced in my personal opinion. Yeah, I agree as well. So I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm always nervous with these types of games, especially ones that can be mean. Um, but I like the fact that they give you the option of being really mean or maybe a little mean or you kind of like midway and you have multiple types of cards where you can gain points. Like I managed to get a lot of points with my blueprints yeah. at the end, accomplishing the objectives there where, you know, I don't know what other cards you I guys may I was using staff cards to right. kind of gain money. Like and I yeah. went with upgrades on my right. one or two attractions that I had. The more upgrades okay. I had, the higher points I got. So. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, there are different ways. And I like games like that. I'm terrible at games where there's one way of winning and that's it. I, I won't win. My brain doesn't work <laughs> like normal people. So, you know, I need the option. So that uh, really appealed to me. And I like the fact that you can basically choose your level of games that you'd like to play. Oh, and a quick note. Yeah. The rule book. Oh my God, the rule book is hilarious. I oh. think it's all scratched out and like little notes were put in, but they did that before <laughs> they printed it. So 
Great job on the rule book. It made me laugh while I was reading it. The rule book was very thematic and, uh, like Tracy said, worth worth reading through just for the laughs. <laughs> it's true. Other reviewers that I've talked to mentioned that as well, that they really enjoyed reading all of that. So kudos to them uh, for doing that. I thought that makes it a bit more entertaining and fun because rule books are <laughs> not always fun to read. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so overall, we give this game thumbs up. We enjoyed it. And uh, these two will probably get a copy anyway. Kickstarter coming soon. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> So thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.